I'm Rick Croslin, and welcome to Family Science Summer Safari, where the adventure begins in your own backyard. Today, we're going to explore the day and night sky, and we'll be looking at some pretty awesome things like this shepherd's sundial that's thousands of years old, and this amazing map of the night sky. Let's go check it out. So, the first thing we're going to look at are sundials and there's two sundials you can make this week the first one is a pretty simple sundial and i've taken as a paper plate right here and i've marked it off like a clock and really all we need is either a straw or this pencil i use my ruler to mark it off and we need a sunny day and so we're going to do that one and then we're going to show you this shepherd's sundial this one has been around for so long it was even found in the ruins of herculaneum uh, they had a simple one that works the same as this. You'll get a kit like this with directions that are in the journal of how to make this so you can tell time with the sun. So let's go put this to work and see how it actually does work. So this is pretty simple to make. A plate, a pencil, you put it down and you need a sunny day so it's going to cast a shadow and I'm going to push this right through the middle there and uh, sometimes you might need to put a rock on this just to hold it in place so the wind doesn't blow it. Now, I'm going to have to set this using my own watch right here. And I, it's about 3.30. And so if you notice, take a close look at the shadow right there. That shadow is in between the 3 and the 4. That's 3.30. We'll come back to that a little bit and see as the earth rotates and as the sun moves if we can get a different time. So I can tell by the sundial, we've spent about an hour because the shadow has moved. It's got longer and it's moved. And so I think it's time to move on. Now this is the shepherd's or the cylindrical sundial. And after you make this, this one is a lot of fun to make and to actually use. Now if you notice, I put a rubber band on the bottom here so I can turn this if you take a close-up of this, I'll hold it right here so you can see. I've got this on here. You can color it for your different time zones. And I'm going to rotate this around to it's in the middle of May right now. So I'm going to put it right in the middle of May. And I have this rubber band to kind of hold it in place. And watch when I'm going to have to stand up. Okay, according to the directions, <laughs> you put your back to the sun and you let go of this and and you can see the shadow if you look closely we'll zoom in on that can you see the shadow right about there and i have the shadow going about coming up to about three o'clock so these are kind of cool but i want you to go out several times during the day and try it and see how the shadow changes shepherd's sundial imagine a time before clocks what would it be like without those two important hands of the clock telling you what time it is? What would you do if you couldn't simply look at the digital watch on your wrist? Well, there weren't always clocks, so how did people tell time before the clock was invented? Some people would wake up in the morning when the rooster on their farm gave them the cock-a-doodle-doo. <laughs> in some societies, people would know the time of day based on the ringing of a bell or the sounding of a horn. Maybe some people could tell time of the day when they got hungry. <laughs> Eventually, people in ancient civilizations realized that you could tell the time of day by looking at the sun's position in the sky or the shadow. The first sundials were made by the ancient Egyptians around 1500 BC and scientists have found evidence of sundials in many ancient civilizations including those of the Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. Okay so this large yellow piece of paper you might recognize it from my lessons in your classroom. If this was the sun, and here's the earth to scale, we can use this to make a sundial. I put a stick in the middle here, and you can see the shadow right here. This is three o'clock, six o'clock, nine, and 12. And look what happens if I even put a taller stick. You can see the shadow. And you can make one of these outdoors, as, as easy as this. I'll tell you, let's take a look at some more models of the sun and the earth. So, the way we know that these shadows change, and to make a shadow you need three things. A light source, the sun, an object, in this case the stick, 
and a surface for it to land on, the ground. But why do shadows change in the day? And we can use them for clocks. Well, it has to do with the things that move in our solar system. If I am the sun right here, the planets, including Earth, go around the sun. But when you look at the sky, it looks like the sun is going across the sky. And for many, many years, that's what people thought. That was called the geocentric idea or theory, that the Earth geo was the center. We now know, of course, that it's the heliocentric or Helios, the sun. And the sun is what holds all the solar system together. In fact, 99.9% .9 of all matter in the solar system is named after Sol, our star, the sun. That little black dot right there represents Earth. So it's the Earth that holds everything together and we rotate around it. Like this one, you can make this at home with a PVC, a coat hanger, and a foam ball. This is called a year, one year as it goes around the sun. And the moon goes around the earth, here's our earth, and it takes 28 days for the moon to rotate around. All these things are moving. And we have a model like this, which is not the scale by distance or size, but it's still a pretty cool model to show us how the earth goes around the sun, that's one year and how the moon goes around the earth, a lunar, and how the earth rotates. And it's that 24 hour rotation that looks like the sun's growing across the sky. Now, if you're lost, you never wanna follow the sun because you'd be walking east in the morning and as the sun goes up, you would actually be going a little bit to the south and at noon, you wouldn't know where to go because the sun's straight over your head. And then by the end of the evening, you'd be heading west. And if you continue that, you'd walk in a circle. The same thing happens at night. So with these models, we can learn a lot about the relationship between the sun, earth, and moon. But all models have limitations. Even this model, when you study the night sky, a new moon, which means nude, which you don't see a moon, or a full moon. And there are eight different phases of the moon. And I hope this summer, use your kit in your notebook to keep track of these phases. I know for a fact that in about two days, it'll be a full moon. And where can you learn this information? In this night sky book that I put in your kit. This is amazing. It has the summer sky and the night sky. And it's a glow in the dark. If you use your flashlight, maybe a pillow and a blanket, we can learn about the stars. But I, what I really like about this is on the other side is so many facts and information about what you can see in the night sky. In fact, about five planets are visible. So, whether you're looking at the moon or the stars or the sundial, there's a lot to do and a lot to see in the day and night sky. And you can look in your journal to see a list of different activities you can do. So all we gotta do now is get our star chart, our pillow, some bug spray, and check out the stars. But we got a problem. <laughs> uh, we have one star we can look at, and that star is Sol, our sun. We'll have to come back when the Earth rotates out of view. Well, I'm almost ready for the night sky. I've got a blanket, I got me a pillow, <laughs> and I get some bug spray. And I pick a night where it's not raining and not too cloudy. And I'm pretty excited as the sun's going down to come out a little bit later and to learn more about the night sky. And so using this booklet here, you'll notice there's all kind of facts on this side, but we're gonna be tonight using this side of it. And we're, we're gonna look at the night sky in the summer. And what I love about this, before it gets dark, study this, see if you can find a couple of the constellations, like, for example, Draco the Dragon, or Ursa Major. Ursa is a word that means bear, and major is big. So there's the big bear and the little bear, but you might know it as the little and big dipper. Now, what I like about this, and I'll show you this when it's a little bit darker, is I brought my flashlight and I can use this flashlight to energize this glow in the dark and that way I can turn it off and this would be the perfect thing to hold over my head. 
So before we get started, there's a south and north. You need to know where the north and south is. This way is north and this way is south. So I'm going to put this facing south over my head and that's how I'm going to orient what I see on the map with what's in the sky. And also, a lot of times we talk about the sky, how high to look. I like to use, if, you're, if you see something you want to explain to a, a friend or, or your brother or sister, tell them to look in that direction and how many fists above the sky is it. And if it's low to the horizon, it might be just one fist. But if you really want to point to somebody, tell them, go this direction, six fists up, and there's that star. So when it gets a little bit dark, we'll take a look at that. And especially, you know how the sun seems to move across the sky during the day? It's actually the earth tilting this way. The same thing's gonna happen tonight. The earth is still spinning. So if you see some stars here, later in the night, they're not gonna be there. Let's wait and see when it gets a little bit darker. Okay, so it's finally dark enough, and I've had a chance to come outside and look at the night sky and it is really beautiful. And I'm using my star chart here, so let's just see how this works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, make sure that I got the right one. This is the night sky in the summer. Let me get, I can get it all charged up right here. And then I'm gonna turn this off and maybe you can see it. Oh yeah, look at that. That is so cool. And now I can lay back and right above my head is the Big Dipper. I can actually see it right here. That is so cool. Facing the south, holding this over your head and you can enjoy the night sky. Go outside, try to get somewhere where it's dark, bring your bug spray, bring your star chart and enjoy the constellations. Oh, there's Leo, Cassiopeia, and right above me is the Big Dipper, and the water's coming right out of it. That is so cool. Enjoy the day and night sky. I'll see you at the Google Meet.